Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 540. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College Upset link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 539 to 550. Hey, in this trick here, we have a uh, transactional list here and a transactional list here. This is the second one, the new list, and we need to check each record. Hey, is this record over here? If it is, then we're not interested. Is this record over in this list? Hey, this is not in that old list, so we're interested in it and we want to extract it. Now, in the last video, 539, we did uh, add an extra column with a formula and did filter, which I think is the best way to do this. Uh, in this video, we're going to see a, an array formula that will do it. We'll have a formula here and it will just automatically do it. The first trick is we need to count how many records that are in this list that are not over there. And just like the last video, we're going to use match function. But since we're not matching one particular item in a column of items, we're looking at an entire record. We need to join all the elements in uh, these columns and then compare them against all of the elements in, in these columns. Now over here we, we got away with, uh, since we we're copying it down a column, we just join one record. But this video, no, we're going to have to check the whole data set against the whole data set. So we'll start with the match part. And we're going to say, hey, what is the lookup value? We want to look up all of these values simultaneously. And I'm going to hit the F4 key and then ampersand to join them. Click in this column, control shift down arrow, and then F4, ampersand, and then the next column, control shift down arrow, ampersand, oops, F4, and then shift 7, ampersand, and then finally the last column here, control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. Uh, and those are the four columns for the uh, first, the second table that has the uh, new records, and that's the lookup value. We're putting an array of values into this argument here, which is expecting a single value, so this certainly is going to be an array formula. Uh, now, the lookup array, oh, we need to match them in the same order against these tables. So, whoop, control shift down, oh, F4, shift 7, F4, shift 7, control shift down, oh, F4, shift 7, and finally this one, control shift down, oh, F4. All right, now we have our lookup array, comma, we're going to do comma, exact match, close parenthesis. Now, what is this going to do? This is going to give us a huge string of trues and falses. I'm going to hit the F9 key. So, uh, looks like there's an NA for the second element, so that one is a unique record in this list that's not over there because it couldn't find that, so it delivers an NA. Now, Control-Z. Notice, just like in the last video, uh, by concatenating all these columns together, we're in, essence, re we're in essence reducing it to a single column. And you can see that here, value, semicolon, which means go to the next row, value, semicolon, go to the next row, Control-Z. Now, we want, we're interested in the is NAs, the NAs, so I'm going to say use a true false function is an A. Hey, this will just deliver now a bunch of trues wherever there is an N A, which is what we're interested in. And we're counting for this formula. Count new records that are in second list but not in first. So I'm going to put a close parenthesis at the end, a double negative in front of this. Those will that'll convert all the trues and falses to ones and zeros and then the sum product. How about that? Instead of using um, sum and control shift enter. Now, sum product can handle arrays, so we just control enter. I didn't control shift enter, there's no um, curly brackets there. Now, this whole thing right here, we're going to use again in an array formula. So let's see, that's the green one. So I come to the end and copy, escape. Now, we have our three, we're going to have to turn off the formula after it gets past the third row here. So we're going to start this off equals if rows, and I'm sitting in K13, so K dollar sign 13 colon K13. This is the part of the formula that will increment 1, 2, 3, 4 as it goes down, on the for as the formula gets copied down. Whenever that is greater than our 3 over here, F4. That means when we get past row 3, what do we want? 
comma, the value if true is blank, because I don't want to see anything, because there's no more records to extract. Otherwise, and we're going to use a lookup function, we're going to use index. And then I'm going to say, uh, what is the array I'm looking at, wanting to extract? Well, notice there's four columns. This is the data set I'm extracting the new records from. So I'm going to highlight this column, control shift down arrow, and then hit F4. I'm going to hit it two, two times, because as I copy this formula over, I need that whole range to move to the next column. And so that's what it will do, not locked in front of the column, but the row. Comma, and now we need a row number. Well, this is where the tricky part comes in. We already have our str tr string of trues and falses from our earlier formula that will tell us that's how many rows we have, so it'll give us a true for every time there is a record that's in this list but not the other. So we're going to use that to get row numbers. Now we have to use a small because we're going to have an array of row numbers. We're going to have to say inside of the small, notice it's, it says array, so I'm going to say if. And now the logical test, because we need row numbers, right? We, we're just going to have the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And we're going to use that string of trues and falses from our earlier formula, control V. Remember that just gave us F9, false, true. So false, true, that means that is a record we're interested in. False, 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 true. I think it's that one right there, right? So that's the first part, control Z, of the if. All of these row numbers need to be dumped into small. So logical test, and then comma, the value of true, just row. And you can pick whichever column you want. I'm going to hit F4. That'll give us row 13, 14. That's not what we want. We want 1, 2. So I'm going to say ro minus row of that one, first one in the range, F4. That'll give us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the uh, nearly the end. So we add back 1. All right, so that's our value. If true, we don't need the value of false. <coughs> Close parentheses. Now, the um, small, if you highlight all of this right here, F9, it has what we want. There's the row number, row number, row number for the records to extract. Controls, and we need the first one, then the second one, then the third one. Control Z. So this formula incrementer just has lots of great uses. Comma, the K to extract is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So we'll use that. Close parentheses on the small, close parentheses on the index close parentheses on the if, control shift enter. Now I'm going to copy this over and I think I'm going to point to the smart tag. Oh, control Z, control Z. I'm going to point to the smart tag. I was trying to show you that that's a date right there. I'm going to say fill without formatting. So then I can copy this down. And so there we have it. There's a, um, a formula method. Uh, ooh, that looks like a big formula, but really it was that it's that match with all those concatenations that's making it so big. All right, um, this uh, 39, I like that better filter, copy, paste, but uh, some people like these dynamic array formulas. All right, we'll see you next trick.